Hey guys, this is Chantel and today I want to talk to you about several crops that you can grow in mid to late July and I have them with me right now. And actually I'm going to be planting several of them today. Whether you are a beginner gardener or someone that has been gardening for a while, you might not realize that you can have multiple seasoning of uh, multiple seasons of planting, not seasoning. <laughs> you can have actually three se seasons for planting early spring, midsummer, and uh, late summer to or early late to early summer and so this way you can have a late spring harvest a late summer harvest and a late fr uh, fall harvest also let's go ahead and dive into some of the things that you can grow in midsummer or mid July to late July I don't have everything with me right now and this is not everything that you can plant there is a lot more than you can plant in the summer but these are a few of the things that you can plant so right here I have some gray zucchini you can also plant the regular european style zucchini but this is something that i prefer so i'm going to be planting that i also have some parsley some swiss chard and if you want to grow swiss chard you can harvest it as baby leaves or you can let it grow uh, until it is larger and swiss chard can tolerate both in uh, hot and cold temperatures before i continue i want to say that we live in zone five so even though this is mid july or late july for me actually um, even though this is late july i'm still going to be planting things like zucchini and stuff like that and earlier uh, in the beginning of the month i actually planted cucumber and we just started harvesting our first cucumbers and they are so good i planted the bait alpha cucumbers and if you want to know more about the things that I've, i'm planting here and i'm going to plant maybe not this year but next year and also in the fall you can go ahead and check out the video that i did about the seed haul for this year i actually dropped some swiss chard seeds everywhere over here because I didn't realize that the bag was ripped so I might end up with some Swiss chard germinating in my pathways. <laughs> I also have here some late season cabbage and this I will be planting to harvest in the fall and I have some I said parsley already I have some bush beans and those mature pretty quickly and then you can harvest them very quickly and they also sort of fizzle super quick so so this is perfect for this time of the, to plant for this time of the year also I have uh, this water leaf spinach and this is a warm season spinach and this is why I can plant it now now we are in the uh, season in the area where we can we get hot temperatures so we have two to three weeks of hot temperatures uh, last week was our first week of really hot temperatures which is in the 90s and this is going to be also another week of hot temperatures today we got some uh, rainstorms uh, and this is great it watered the garden even though i watered it this morning <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> extra water is not going to hurt it i also have some broccoli it's like broccoli and cauliflower and sometimes some cabbage also uh, do better if you actually plant them when the weather warms up a little bit because then they have less tendency to bolt and they would have uh, bigger heads so even though i planted broccoli uh, and earlier this season i'm going to plant it again because the heads are small because it was still cold when i planted it even though it was like uh, June and we were still getting really cold temperatures so the broccoli is not doing as good as I would like it to but that's okay and it was exposed to cold temperatures as well because I had it in my seedling trays and I was trying trying to harden it off and the, the weather was still kind of in the uh, was still super cold at that period so it's not doing that great so I want to replant I'm going to harvest whatever I can from it whatever the cabbage moths left for me because I haven't actually been spraying with BT I should right now I have some kale and they ate most of my kale because they lay their they lay their eggs over there and and uh, then you end up with tons of cabbage worms and they ate up all the leaves on my broccoli and on my kale so I wasn't actually able to harvest any of the kale so what I'm planning on doing is taking off all the leaves off the kale and then let it flush again and giving all the leaves to the chickens because they'll have all the worms on them and the chickens will eat both the leaves and the worms so they'll be super happy and healthy. <laughs> 
Um, I also have an early season cabbage right here. So this way I can have an earlier harvest and a later harvest. And there are two different kinds of cabbages also. This way um, I could get to try them out and see which one I like best. And I have the purple of Sicily cauliflower. I really like this cauliflower. I planted it earlier this spring and I was able to harvest some. The heads again were not as big because it was planted in the cold season, uh, but it was we were still able to harvest some. That's what I'm going to be planting. And I also have some beets. Uh, now some other stuff that you can plant are kale and maybe some tomato plants that are pre-planted like if you buy from a nursery uh, some what else some herbs maybe like basil and oregano and stuff like that you will not be able to have a long season of harvest for them but at least you will get a little bit uh, of that harvest it won't be a large harvest but you'll get something from it you know to kind of season your food and stuff uh, and so this is what I have I'm sure there are many other varieties that you can plant and maybe like uh, green onions that would be probably good too uh, you can plant those, uh, not the bulbing onions, but the green onions. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of things that you can plant in this season and you would still get a um, very good harvest off of them. This year I didn't plant any zucchini in early summer, so I'm planting it now and I'm kind of regretting that I didn't, but maybe it's a good thing because then I'm less likely to have the uh, squash bugs because they kind of tend to come uh, during that time and so especially during the heat so maybe now when I plant it it's going to germinate it might germinate faster hopefully they won't smell it and come <laughs> uh, but at least uh, by that time the heat period would have um, dissipated and um, we will have less heat and less likely to get squash bugs that's what I'm hoping for <laughs> Okay, so right now I'm going to find some places to plant these vegetables and we'll plant them together. But let me show you a few things first before we start. These are the Bait Alpha Cucumber and they are so good. They don't have as many thorns as pickling cucumbers and we use them for pickling. They're super crunchy and they are slightly on the sweet side and they are super delicious. They are my favorite kind. These are the kind of cucumbers I grew up on and uh, these are the cucumbers that I'm going to be planting from now on. I might try some few vari few other varieties just because I like to do that. I like to try new things because you never know if you might like it or not. And if I don't like it, then I won't plant it again. But if I do like it, then I'm going to be planting it, planting it again. This is the size that I like to harvest them at. And with these cucumbers, if you let them grow, um, large they will be they will have big seeds inside of them and they will uh, be tougher they will have a tougher skin so they will not be as good to eat so I prefer this size maybe slightly bigger also is good but this is my favorite size over here and they are so good here Gabriel I don't think we're gonna have any cucumbers left to pickle because anytime any cucumber matures we eat it Mm. So good. Can you hear the crunch? <laughs> mm. Also, look at this mama bird made a nest over here, and we have four cute little birdies. I don't know if you guys can see them well. They're starting to develop their feathers and both the mom and the dad are taking care of them. I saw them here a little bit earlier. They're kind of running around frantically because I'm, I'm in the area, but um, I'll be leaving them soon. Look at these strawberry tomatoes. Aren't they so cool? Look at this. Super cool and they are so delicious. The borage is starting to flower also. And it's making this area pretty cool. The um, peppers are doing a little bit better than when I first planted, planted them. I don't know if these will do anything over here, but uh, we'll see. And I'm starting to get some eggplants. Look at this. We're right here. 
and I have a bigger one somewhere where I just saw it. Where did it go? Oh, there's another one right here. And this is some fennel and the tomatillos are kind of crowding them a little bit because they leaned over and they're kind of crawling on the ground, but it's not a big deal. What are these? That's fennel. These flowers are just super cool. Look at this. This would be excellent, I think, in bridal bouquets. It's just so beautiful and fun and it gives this movement. I just want to say I'm not an expert at bouquet making. I like to do it. I'm fairly new to it and I'm hoping to learn more about it in the future just because I love the beauty that it brings to uh, the home and that's it. this is why I also like to plant some cut flowers because I can cut them and not feel bad about it and bring them inside. So let's see where we can find some places to plant these vegetables. I think I'm going to be planting the beans in this bed over here and also in this bed over here. I just need to clean up a little bit. There might be some weeds around. So I'm, I'm going to pull them and plant the beans. And I'm going to be leaving this lettuce and uh, this dandelion and also the strawberry spinach because I want to harvest the seeds from them. For the bush beans, you want to plant them about half an inch to one inch deep. And I prefer to plant them about half an inch deep because I feel like sometimes when you plant seeds a little bit too deep, they have a hard time germinating. And you want to plant them about four inches apart. I just want to say thank you guys so much for all your comments and kind words. It means a lot to me and it really keeps me going and helps me to continue to make these videos for you. The reason why I'm making these videos is to help you guys so that you can learn all the skills that you want to learn. I don't think I have enough beans to fill this bed. I definitely don't. So. I'll just plant whatever I have in here. I might save a few for next year just in case if these don't do well so that at least next year I can plant again. So I'm planting them four inches apart from each other. I'll finish this row and I'll leave the rest for next year. I'm leaving a little bit for next year so I'm going to now push them into the ground about half an inch deep and bury them. And I have one, two, three, four, five rows. Wow, this is super hard. Oh my goodness. It's like soil is so dense. I forgot to mention that I also amended the soil right before I started planting and I didn't scratch it into the soil just because we got a lot of rain and the soil is super muddy as you can understand and that would be really hard to mix in the fertilizer into the soil. I'm just making a line over here to kind of remind me where I finished planting. There we go. So that I don't plant over the beans. So now I'm going to plant the rest of this bed over here with some parsley. If you've never had tabbouleh before, you should try it. That's why I'm planting all this parsley over here. And for parsley, you want to plant it about 8 to 12 inches apart. And you can plant it a little bit closer, and I have done it many times. I planted it a lot closer than uh, the suggested uh, spacing, especially if you kind of want to kind of trim all of it like uh, for the uh, leafy growth and not just the tips of it. Now if you do space it, the full spacing about 8 to 12 inches apart, 8 inches should be good really, but if you do space it that way then the you will get bigger parsley, larger leaves and larger stems. Now I'm not super keen on the larger stems but I am. I do like the larger leaves because larger leaves means that I can get a lot more 
uh, parsley to make tabbouleh with and to preserve for the winter to use in cooking because I use a lot of parsley in a lot of dishes that I cook especially sauces and tacos and stuff like that so uh, so let's go ahead and plant the parsley parsley seeds are also super tiny so you don't want to plant them super deep a quarter inch should be enough you can plant them a little bit deeper than that I'm going to place them and plant them right away because they are super hard to see. Let me bring them a little closer so that you guys can see. There they are. They're sort of, they're a little bit bigger than carrot seeds. I'm going to plant two seeds in each spot just to make sure that I get a good germination. I think that I'm not going to be able to use my glove. I have to step in here. Oh. There we go. And I'm going to space the rows also about 8 to 12 inches apart. You can come back and thin them. I'm not sure that I would, personally. If I get to it, I will. If not, oh well. In this bed over here, I'm going to be planting the Purple of Sicily cauliflower and the broccoli. So I think I'm going to plant the cauliflower on this side and the broccoli on the other side. With the cauliflower and broccoli, just like it is with the parsley, you want to plant them a quarter to a half an inch deep. I prefer to go on the shallower side than on the deeper side because sometimes if you go on the deeper side you might go a little bit too deep and then the seeds won't germinate and you want to space them about 18 to 20 inches apart because they do kind of grow wide they have large leaves and um, even though I planted over here a lot of leafy greens and these will use also a lot of nitrogen I'm not super worried about that especially because I put all the leaves that I didn't need anymore back into the bed and so that would have added a little bit more nitrogen so now before I plant I'm going to amend the soil a little bit and then I'm going to plant now once these plants that are over here give me their seeds like the lettuce and the Italian dandelion and the strawberry spinach. I'm going to pull them out of the bed because they would have done what I needed them to do. I also pulled out the spinach but because we do get a lot of rain I'm not sure if the seeds are actually viable because they're super wet. I don't even know if they actually reached maturity. The plants, the plants are dead um, or almost dead <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not so sure if if they're viable but I'm going to try to save them and I will try to plant them in the early fall to see if they actually are uh, viable or not before I proceed to save them for the whole year. And you guys, just to be real, this is the state of the tomato. Oh well, life happens. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going along with it and I'm not super worried about it. I will come and fix them whenever I can. And if I can't, so be it. At least they are giving me something and it's better than nothing this is the orange icicle tomato over here and they are so good my favorite so far is the Cherokee tomato and I don't think I can find one over here the strawberry tomato that I showed you earlier the Cherokee tomato and the orange icicle I haven't tried well I tried one more two more um, I think that, where is it, if I can find it. This one over here is also really good. I lost the name tag for it, 
but it tastes really good but really these strawberry tomatoes are just absolutely delicious I think they are one of my favorites and again the Cherokee tomatoes and it looks like I'm gonna be having a lot of strawberry tomatoes that are gonna be ready for harvest pretty soon I'm not a big fan of these um, Tom Thumb tomatoes they don't have a big flavor to them um, I think I probably am not going to be planting them again also they didn't do very well because of the situation of this bed over here uh, you can see kind of how the tomato leaves are all just dying and all that so I'm just gonna let them go and let them produce as much as they can I mean look at this the leaves are just they're crisping not a big deal we'll just get whatever they give us right now I'm going to weed a little bit under this bed not everything but just whatever I can and I'm going to plant some beets not a lot because I'm not a big fan of beets but I do like them roasted I also like using them a lot with pickling and fermenting um, turnips because they give them a wonderful color uh, and I don't have to use any dyes or anything and the turn these beets just do an amazing job and they turn them this beautiful pink color I'm going to space the beets about four inches apart from each other because they grow about this big to their mature size and you can harvest I mean sometimes they do grow bigger but that's about the size that I would har harvest them at let me show you their seeds this is their seeds that's how it looks like and for this seed I'd probably bury it about a half an inch deep I'm going to put two seeds in here these are my old seeds from Heaven's Harvest and I am planting two seeds in each hole and I will come back and thin them after I'll let them grow a little bit before I thin them and I'm under planting the tomatoes with the beets because uh, as you can see the tomatoes are limbed up so these beets will receive enough sunlight to sprout and to do what I need them to do I'm not super worried about the greens you can, you can also harvest and eat the greens and I've done that in the past I probably will do it again they're sort of they're similar to Swiss chard greens but they're a little bit sweeter so I might have actually planted a lot more beets than I expected but I was thinking about it you know these are old seeds just in case if they are not the, if they have a very low germination rate I might as well just plant as many as I can in this small area and then whatever germinates is great if nothing germinates that's okay I'll try to plant something else anyways I'm going to be planting radishes and turnips for the fall harvest so if these don't germinate I will have more space for the radishes and turnips so I was thinking in this bed over here where the peonies were I have some space to plant this water leaf spinach and this is my first time trying it out so I'm going to be planting it here you can notice in the back I started already implementing my method because this bed is doing very poorly um, if you want to know more about what I'm talking about over here I will link the video where I talk more about this at the end of this video so stay tuned for that for these uh, it says that they sprout in 7 to 10 days and to plant them 8 inch, inches deep and 16 inches apart as you can notice I mean if this picture is true it looks like their leaves are large so I am probably going to plant them a little bit closer so that I can harvest for salads and such because I don't want the leaves to grow super big their seeds are tiny oh my goodness how am I supposed to plant them <laughs> I might have buried that a little bit too deep in this bed next to these gorgeous purple zinnias and really the camera doesn't do them justice it's so hard to show the true color on the camera but they are absolutely beautiful this one doesn't is not double for some reason but they're all double blooms like this one over here that's rare that I see something like that so right now I'm going to 
weed this bed and I think I can get away with planting a couple zucchinis right here and I am again planting the gray zucchinis now these are old seeds so I'll probably go a little bit heavier on the seeding instead of planting two seeds in each one I'm going to plant maybe four just to make sure that I get some good germination and I might get really good germination <laughs> and if I do and I have more space because I still want to fix that area right here then I'll probably move some of them over there because you can never have too many zucchinis in my opinion <laughs> especially with this kind because uh, this is the Lebanese kind of zucchini that I grew up on and we like to stuff them and if you've never had Lebanese stuffed zucchini before you really need to try it, especially with this kind of zucchini the gray zucchini or Asian zucchini it is absolutely delicious unless you don't like the texture of zucchini then maybe that dish is not for you but it is so good <laughs> and because the temperatures are super warm these zucchini will take almost no time to germinate it says over here on the packet that they will take 5 to 11 days so it might take them about 5 days to germinate or even less and you want to plant them about half to one inch deep I might actually be able to get away with more than two plants because if I plant one over here on the edge and it's going to spill over on this side I created sort of a circle and put the plants in it so that if all of the seeds do germinate I can easily uh, pull some of the seedlings out and plant some more. So I think that I can plant maybe one over here and one over there. So I have one over here so I'm going to make another circle over here a circle over here. Now I have one, two, three zucchinis. So the zucchinis are planted and now I'm going to work on the cabbage. I love them. Don't touch them, Serenity. Those are the baby birds. Oh, that's so cute. You can't feed them, huh, Booby? Why? Oh, be careful. We don't want to knock the nest over. Okay. What? What's this? Baby birds? Yep, that's the baby birds. Oh, that's so cute. Yes, they are. They're like this tall. How tall? Can you show me? Yeah, this tall. I see. I love them. Aww. Why that and they nest? Because they're little and they need their mama to take care of them. Why? Let's leave them, okay? Who's that? Who's that? It's the baby birds. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> like so, this is the garlic bed. This is where I pulled all the garlic. You see how the weeds just kind of flourished in here and in the walkway also. So I have a lot of work to do. I'm not going to work on the walkway right now. That will be a project for another day. I'm actually going to try to pay the kids to do it. We'll see if that's going to work out. <laughs> um, but I'm going to pull these weeds and then I'm going to plant maybe one type of cabbage in here, not two. Because I also have this bed over here that had the fava beans in it and I have to pull all these out but I was waiting for the fava beans to mature and I think that um, I'll have to wait a little bit longer I might be able to pull some of the plants out like this one over here doesn't have any on it and it's all rotted there's a weed over here which is this is edible but I don't want it um, it's a wild spinach or don't quote me on that do your research <laughs> so anyways so this is the bed where I'm going to be planting another type of cabbage and it would be good because over here I had fava beans and in here I had some garlic so the garlic doesn't really use up that much nitrogen and the fava beans 
also don't use any ni well they use a little bit of nitrogen of course but they also put nitrogen into the soil but because they produce their fruits uh, they're not going to be putting any more nitrogen in um, and I will be taking all of this and throw it throwing it into the compost pile not today that will be on a different day today I'm going to focus on this bed try to weed it all uh, try to weed all of it and then I will plant the cabbage I think I'm going to be planting the short season cabbage in this one and then after I get to this bed I'll plant the long season cabbage in the other one so this way I can get some harvest before the um, before late fall and I also forgot to fertilize some of the places where I planted so I have to go ahead uh, I have to go and fertilize those areas but first I'm gonna weed this bed and then I'll do that this is the amount of grass that I pulled up from the bed here in comparison to the bed that's what it is clearly there was a lot of nitrogen in this bed because this grass grew this much in just a period of two weeks it was this little and now look at it I mean it's super healthy so uh, that's a bummer because this gr this grass has used up a lot of the nitrogen because I did put a lot of uh, mulch on it from the uh, from straw and I also when I pulled up weeds that I was able to put on the bed that I knew that are not going to sprout I put them back on the bed and that also gave it a lot more nitrogen but unfortunately I wasn't able to get to this grass on time so it took a lot of ni the nitrogen out. I have a place where I just kind of dump this stuff uh, where I don't use it in the in my vegetable bed right away. I might use it years later just to make sure that all the seeds are kind of done and gone and if there are any roots or anything they're all gone so that I don't have a bunch of weeds growing in my beds. I mean, I'll always have weeds growing in my beds, obviously, but, uh, you know, I try to minimize it as much as I can. So this is the Brunswick cabbage and its maturity date is, it doesn't specify the maturity date on this one, uh, but uh, I believe it matures earlier than the, uh, than the pre, pre, premium, than the pre, premium late flat Dutch man. I don't know why that word was so hard to say. With these, just like the broccoli and the cauliflower, you want to space them about 18 to 20 inches apart from each other because they do kind of grow large. They have large leaves. I'm looking at a yellow finch over here in, in the garden. I think they might like uh, some of the flowers and uh, the, uh, the spinach that's here. Anyways, uh, let's get back to the topic, shall we? <laughs> Oh, he's so cute. Or she, that's a she. Uh, so I just fertilized the bed and now I'm going to plant these and I think I'm going to fertilize the rest of the beds and I'm going to stop for the, for the night. Can you guys see these gorgeous gorgeous gladiolas behind me? I had these corms for two years and I planted them this year and they still survived so I was surprised and happy at the same time. So you want to keep the seed moites with all the seeds until they germinate and then of course you want to keep them watered, well watered also 
after that you don't want them to dry out before the seeds germinate if you let them dry out what could happen is that the seeds will die because they would be ready to germinate and then they dry out and they die so you want to make sure to keep all the seeds moist at all times until they fully germinate uh, and also with the cabbage because of all the cabbage moths that you see around here I'm going to be actually covering them right away uh, I might not be able to do it tonight but I will probably do it tomorrow if it's not going to rain the mosquitoes are eating me alive right now it's like 8 o'clock or 8 30 or something like that so I have to fertilize get rid of this grass put stuff away and go inside and then tomorrow I'll come back and cover this cabbage I mean the best way to really have um, the cabbage moths away from any of your brassicas is to cover them up uh, but if you don't want to deal with that you'll have to spray with Bt once or twice a week. Bt is a natural uh, back soil bo born bacteria which is Bacillus thuringiensis if I'm saying that correctly uh, and uh, what happens is that uh, when you spray it on the leaves um, the uh, the caterpillars when they digest it um, they die so um, sounds gruesome but that's it, that's what it is and uh, we don't want the cabbage the cabbage worms eating our food because we want to eat it <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching I will again be leaving a link to how to have a self-sustaining garden and um, and I'm also sure I mentioned something else that I was going to leave a link to earlier in the video. I, for I totally forgot what it was, but I'm sure you'll see it at the end of this video on this side. Over here. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.